tie line between trees. In this video I'm going to show you how to do that. The material we use here in that video is the Selectivity Tree Highline Kit. And the first thing you want to make sure is to have two solid healthy trees. One thing you should be aware of is the knowledge provided here is not really enough to rig a Highline on your own. I clearly recommend to visit Highline course or join some friends who are Highlining since a longer time. So we get started with having a tree here. And this tree is a bit smaller than it should be, so later on I'm gonna strap it back tightly. Then you put a tree pro. Don't go too high, because like if, the, if it's fixed too high, it's gonna be hard to mount the line, to do rescues if needed, or, and so on. Like only if it's really necessary, only then go high. But go on the necessary height to not touch the ground even in the unlikely case of a mainline failure. Then I already prepared the selectivity adjustable tree sling. I wrap it twice and I try to distribute the weight on a bigger surface to protect the tree. Make sure to read the manual of every single piece properly to definitely not make a mistake in rigging the gear. So here I basically already prepared part of the anchor but in highlining you want to have everything redundant. Redundant means everything should be double safe. So I take a second sling, I also wrap it around the tree, like this tree is small enough to wrap the sling twice. And then I take the shackle, the kingpin that I've already prepared and I connect it to both systems here. So I clip it here and additionally I clip the round sling to that kingpin too. Now we still have a single piece of failure here, so I want to change that. I want to have this part redundant too, so I put a second kingpin through both. And this is basically gonna be our backup anchor. This is so-called master point. Now make sure that this sling is not too long. Imagine like something on the first sling would fail and you fall into that system. So now you lose like almost half a meter. So that's a kind of an unnecessary half meter. Try to have it as short as possible without this sling being under tension. And for simplicity reasons, I mean there are some sophisticated knots to do so, but I'm aware that like not everybody knows how to tie like super complicated knots. So we just want to stay really simple. So what I'm gonna do here is just tying an overhand knot, like this will shorten down the sling. And now you can clip, like after the girth hitch, you can clip the um, the kingpin through here and you have this sling shortened. Even if this knot would slide open, it still catches here. So overall it's just a big benefit to have it as short as you can. So now I'm in the same situation again, just that I have the sling shortened down. So now if anything on the first anchor would fail, the second sling would be really short. You only lose like 10 centimeters or so. One thing I already prepare now is the leash because this is something that often gets forgotten I promise you you will also forget it one day um, this leash has an additional padding that's great if you want to freestyle it just like protects you from hard hits so I prepare the leash ring I just clip it to the to the seahorse to certainly not forget as soon as I tie the webbing so this is the tensioning anchor which is basically ready now, so it's time to prepare the static anchor. This is the kind of tree you want to have, like it's healthy, it's big, it's well rooted, just like really a perfect highline anchor. One thing I should also mention is like always when you are close to a cliff or somewhere where it really gets down, like always be secured with your personal anchor because like special like it's so easy to to trip over while handling something here and especially when there is tension on the line or on the tagline and you're doing something suddenly you have a pull in direction of the void 
So this is one of the most dangerous moments of highlining is like just not being secured at the anchor point. So here I've prepared the two slings like on the other side. Here we are at the static anchor. So again like these two slings I want to connect the, the seahorse to the main but I also want to include the second sling again to it. So I clip the seahorse to both like that. This is gonna be our main anchor and like on the other side I do the same with the backup. The only big difference is that on this side there is no soft release so just a little less gear but overall the, the, the principle is the same. So again I have a master point prepared. So this webbing is called a type X webbing because there is a soon connection in the middle making it look like a X. So the pink tube is the main line, this is the backup. There is also the version with pink tube and LSD tube if you want to keep switching the line. This one should not be used as main line, it's too static for such short lines. And also when you rig the pink tube make sure to rig a minimum distance of at least 20 meters because if you rig shorter high lines like the impact on every fold would be pretty hard on your body, on the gear. So 20 meter is an absolute minimum, overall I rather recommend to go like 50 meter plus. Even though it's a bit more challenging to walk but like every leash fall will be just so nice like falling into clouds. You're gonna have much more fun on longer rigs. So here I have the um, connection. This should basically be placed in the middle of the rig in the end. A little closer to the static anchor because on the other anchor you will pull. So you will like pull this intermittent connection towards the tensioning anchor. So what I have to prepare before being able to rig that line is taping that line. And what I recommend for people who don't tie line that often is like having a sliding backup. Later on when you go hardcore on highline freestyle or walk longer distance you're better off with sliding main. But maybe you're wondering what, like, what is sliding backup and what is sliding main. So basically I take the webbing, I for example like slide through three meters, slide through a little bit of extra backup and now here is the place where I'm, I want to put the first tape and if I want to have a sliding backup I place the tape with the sticking parts upwards, I place it on the, the backup, I squeeze the tape between the two webbings so now it, it's just like glued to the main line and I go around both lines now a few times make sure to not have it too tight like you can like just like slide it a bit so that there is some air in the tape then I rip the tape apart I glue it well and now when you when you look what happens here it's like sliding back up like I can just like slide that back up freely and overall you don't always want to have the same distance between the tape if you always take three meters the backup like on the whole highland will like make weird shakes so always like go between two and five meters distances between the tapes and always change a bit make it as random as you can so two people together makes it much nicer to tape you can make a taping party put some music on spend a few minutes taping so to get the highland to the other side like Either you can just walk, maybe when there is a field. Here we have too many trees and bushes in the way, so we prefer going with a tagline. A tagline is just like a thin cord. Or you could also fly with a drone if you're equipped and you, if you really have complicated connections to be done. So here we have a tagline, here we have the high line, and what I wanna do is like taking half a meter or one meter of additional webbing, then we'll be hanging down because like if I connect this to the tagline and it starts like rotating with the tagline like this meter that is hanging down will start wrapping around so the person on the other side will know that oh this is the flat so the person giving out the line makes sure that the main line stays flat and the person on the other anchor just like unwraps everything 
to be sure to have the flat. Always keep it a bit under tension, make sure to not touch anything with the webbing or like with a tagline that has any sharp edge or where the line could get stuck. So it's also wise not to have any big loops hanging down, they could easily get stuck in the trees. So the connection is done, I have the main line in my hand and that's the thing I want to clip now to the seahorse. So of course also make sure to already know how to use a web lock and so on. I'm not gonna explain exactly how I clip it here. So the main line is clipped. Now it's important to get the intermittent connection to the place we want to have it. I know right now it's too much on the other side, so I'm gonna pull here a bit, pre-tension the line a bit. Now it's important to make an anti-slippage knot. Like on the seahorse, you just take maybe around one meter of additional webbing. You pass it here behind. You pass it once around the seahorse, like in the, in the front, just like here between the snout and the and the main body and then the webbing here will cross and after the crossing you can go through the center diverter so here i just after the anti slippage knot i tie a figure of eight and i clip that to the kingpin and now what's missing is the second webbing the backup webbing and now a typical beginner mistake is like to already try to to pull it out and to have the right backup length but we will tension the line on the other side so we will pull out around 10 to 20 percent of the of the stretch so right now we just want to leave a lot of backup length that it certainly doesn't get tight while tensioning the line but this also means like after tensioning the line we have to come back to this anchor we anyway have to come back here to make sure that everything is in good conditions we ha should have at least two people checking that everything is perfect but also we should adjust the backup length after tensioning the line entirely so i just get it ready and i clip it here Okay, now I'm here with the mainline webbing in my hand and there is a gentle reminder not to forget the leash. So of course, first thing I do is just like put the leash aside and no, of course, like I first just go through with the mainline and then I clip the mainline to the seahorse. Now the leash is in, I see so many people fixing the leash directly to the anchor, but as soon as you pre-tension the main line a little, like the leash will not just run away and while tensioning it will always come back. So overall you're mostly better off not to fix the leash to the anchor because it's only just annoying and in the way. So now I can like pre-tension the main line. So if you look at the high line now, like it starts, starts looking a bit like a high line. Also I just fixed uh, the end of the backup webbing somewhere of course I will shorten it but like I don't yet know how it should exactly be so I just want to have it out of the way and not falling down into the valley and this is the situation now where I can start tensioning so for tensioning I take a Buckingham pulley system or a hangover pulley system however you want to call it I fixed the T-grip here, a uh, really cool thing about the, the T-grip is like, like you, can, you can tension and after tensioning it's like super easy to move it to a new place. So at the beginning I can just like start with a 3 to 1, giving like a little bit of a base tension. At the beginning when there is not much tension sometimes like it doesn't like pull in nicely because there is not enough tension yet pulling. This will get better as soon as you have a bit bit more tension. So just like pull slowly, be patient, make sure that it like nicely feeds into the seahorse here. I change to the 5 to 1. To build up the 5 to 1 I have this little Danima cord ready. I take another hangover. I take the webbing coming out of the first hangover and 
here I have a beautiful 5 to 1 and like make sure that like for example this is not happening like it should this sling should be placed in the middle of the hangover otherwise if it's too much on the side like the force direction will be here and like then it sometimes happens that the webbing goes a bit like to this side so if you have the sling like nicely placed in the middle also here you can like just adjust the hangover then everything will stay perfectly on the ball bearings and you can like start pulling with a 5 to 1 and here you can see how easily I can just like push that out All right, this is really the moment where you want to have some friends. It's way too exhausting highlining alone. So good tension for highlining overall is like when two people pull with a 5 to 1 in a good direction. Like if you pull like for example in this direction or like sideways, you will never develop the same strength than when you pull straight. Also, the front person should never wrap the hand around like that, otherwise the back person will break your hand. So potentially you can also just go for a 9 to 1, this is also like all the gear that you need for that is included in the set. For that you fix the chain link and now we have a 9 to 1 pulley system and we can go for slightly bigger forces than with the 5 to 1. Okay, probably we are at a pretty good tension. If you want to be like very exact with the tension, you can still get a line scale. It's not the cheapest device, but if you're a hardcore highliner, it's useful to know the tension. And after each run at the beginning, after the first or second run, you will need to retension because the webbing will lose some tension at the beginning. And then maybe after five runs and then after 15 runs, you have to retension a little and after two days of permanent highlining it should just stay the same so really cool thing about this system is you can just take it off like now it's out of the webbing and as you can see the leash has arrived here without us fixing the leash somewhere so i take this the tensioning system off i can also take this part of the seahorse so now we have it very clean I again make an anti-slippage knot about one meter of webbing once around the seahorse go through the center diverter and tie a knot here when you tie a figure of eight knots make sure that they are clean and you can fix it to the backup anchor like one question that often comes up is like which knot should you should you tie personally I really love the figure of eight because like every climber exactly knows how to tie a figure of eight it's easy to double check the figure of eight there is a lot of unfinished nine knots in the game they are a little bit stronger but there is like such a big down point like if you make a little mistake it can be super dangerous and the biggest danger is in highlining is not that the gear fails the biggest danger in highlining is human flaws so take something easy at least this is my opinion and that's why i'm such a big fan of figure of eights so now we have the backup and the leash is beside the backup make sure to also go through the leash with the backup so now the next big question is like how tight do you want to have your backup one thing I definitely do not recommend is having a tight backup like that. If you have the backup tight, every single leash fall will be less nice. And also walking is gonna be like super difficult. And also if there is like strong wind coming in and you don't have backup loops, it gets potentially dangerous. Like having backup loops like that really dampens down all the wind effects. But still the question is like how much backup? Should you just like put three meters additional that's also not what you want to have because like in the unlikely case of a mainline failure it would just like go down a lot and you don't want to drop a lot also like if you have a backup that is too long it will always get wrapped a lot and that's super annoying so um, we try to figure out lately like what is a good 
backup lengths and overall like here we have the intermittent connection around 30 meters from us so you want to add around maybe one and a half percent maximum two percent of that length so 30 meters one percent is 30 centimeters so something between 45 and 60 centimeters of additional backup and additionally you will have to tie a figure of eight or whatever knot you prefer now the backup would be almost straight i have like so much the, the backup is like so much longer than a tight backup right now and the big advantage with the figure of eight is also like you can just super easily adjust the length i know it's folded here i already have like around 10 centimeters in so i add around 40 centimeters no wrong side sorry <laughs> i have to add 40 centimeters to this side and you tie a figure of eight again here now you connect the backup to to that anchor like that be aware that after every time you retension you will have to change the backup length also on the static anchor because there is an intermittent connection making highlining much safer but it also means that like if you tension on on that side that the backup will eventually get tight on the other side so the perfect backup length is that when you bounce or leash fall that it almost engages okay now it's time to double check that anchor and one very common mistake is like that the push pins are not like pushed through perfectly like if i just pull here it could get out so make sure that like the push pin is really locked nicely you have a push pin here you have one here and the two on the seahorse so one more thing I want to do is like tie back the soft release. Personally, I also just tie a figure of eight because the force that arrives here will always be super small. So you have the three loops here in the backup kingpin. You have the main line, backup line and the soft release. So now another very important moment is like at least two people should check every single piece of the rig now like do we have a good master point or is everything clipped nicely and so on so let's get started like is this sling closed properly like we we have to look on the other side like is this really good uh, according to the manual yes it is so this sling is great second sling like especially when you girth hitch you definitely don't want to clip something on this side of the girth hitch because the girth hitch would slide through make sure that it goes the girth hitch is here and you clip everything on the correct side of the girth hitch then we have a master point here we have both kingpins in both webbings or in uh, in both tree slings basically this is the elongation of the tree sling so yes both kingpins are in both tree slings then the soft release is tied back seahorse has an anti-slippage knot with the webbing being tied back yes this is also the case and also the backup is like tied back here so with every single piece you can say like if this fails everything's gonna be okay if this fails everything's gonna be okay with every single piece you can like go through in your mind and think like what happens if this piece of gear fails and if you can always answer like not much then you're on the good side so the only thing here on this anchor point as discussed at the beginning this tree is a little small so we will tie it back with an additional sling which is not included in that highland setup so we are here at the static anchor and the backup was way too long of course because we left like 10 meters of backup inside and we also need to adjust the length so same story as on the other side i try to estimate like where i want to tie a figure of eight i add like 40 to 50 centimeters always after tying the figure of eight i just like hold it beside the anchor point same as on the other anchor we want to make sure that this sling is fit correctly that the girth hitch here is on the good place that like all pins are really closed 
and that we have an anti-slippage knot. Again, I would totally recommend having at least two people checking every single part of the rig to make sure that everything is 100% good and you are totally safe to highline after that. So we tied back the tree now, so we are ready to go. We could potentially also like tie back these webbings here, but also be aware that like if you have like 10 different backups, you will lose overview. So a very important concept of highline rigging is also like keep it simple. Like do the necessary as long as you keep the overview, it's way better than having like a chaotic system with like 20,000 backups. And now one of the most important parts is like tying in and partner check. The more experienced you get, the more probable it is that you simply forget it on one day just because you're not concentrated for one minute. So never forget to do partner checks. Here we have the figure eight and personally I always do a Yosemite finish. The reason for that is to not have that part free hanging and hitting myself into my eye or so. This could be potentially dangerous, especially when freestyling. So I tie back that part. And now I have a figure eight here. I have it pretty tight and somebody should check that this figure eight is good, but also that the other figure eight here is good because like it can happen like to a beginner that he starts like untying the wrong figure of eight and then starts getting confused and starts untying the right figure of eight and just leaves this figure of eight half open. So like also check this knot and like if you just want to walk like often it's useful to tape this part because sometimes you can get stuck here between the tapes. And for the length of the leash like I have it like that length with like so much left over just for freestyling it's a bit better for me but beginners should just have like so much left over after the leg so rather like have the leg like here because like the longer the leash the more probable it is to get wrapped and the harder it is to climb so keep it short and what we also prepared before the highland session is the rescue kit ready at the anchor point cool ready to get started Oops, yeah, this also belongs to a partner check to make sure that the pockets are empty to not have any necklace Not any sharp object that could get hooked in the line and destroy the line potentially Sadly the session is over it's time to de-rig so first thing you want to do is like open all the knots Get everything out of the way that is not under tension. You can also like fix the leash by just like putting it through the center diverter of the seahorse. Okay, so now basically everything is loose. And before opening the soft release, you wanna make sure to get clipped on the anchor. Now you open the soft release and layer by layer you can release it and like the first one or two layers like nothing will happen. But now you can see how it releases. Try to keep it under control with the speed otherwise you get some friction damage on the soft release. As you can see the line is loose enough now to handle it by hand. So now it's time that somebody is on the other side connecting the Highland rig to a tagline so I can pull it over to this side. So for the next Highland session you can simply leave the line taped. Do not take it up over the shoulders like that. It's gonna be a big mess when the backup length is just like longer than the main line. Instead just like feed it into a haul bag. So to feed you can have a redirector somewhere a bit higher on. So I hope you learned something from this video. If you feel unsure with anything you do when rigging a highline, better ask some friends who highline or ask us. Just do not make any mistakes when rigging highlines.